7 a.m. waking up in the morning, gotta be fresh, gotta go downstairs, gotta have my bowl, gotta have cereal, seeing everything time, it's, it's to go and ticking on and on, everybody's rushing. Gotta get down to the bus stop, gotta catch my bus. I see the cabin sitting in the front seat, kicking in the back seat. Gotta make my mind up, which cabin should I kick off the bus? Because why are they on a bus in the first place? It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend, weekend. Friday, Friday, shoot. Friday, Friday, getting down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend. Actually, today's Thursday. Yesterday was Wednesday, Wednesday, today it is Thursday, Thursday. We, we, we so excited, we so excited, we gonna have a ball today. Welcome to Temperamental Pod, where you can watch one woman spiral into madness on a weekly basis. <gasps> You guys, my closet collapsed. My closet collapsed like a dying star. Dude, my closet collapsed like the 2008 stock market. It's, it's, dude, you gotta see it. Here's a picture of what happened. Look at that. Look at that. Look what happened. Uh, for the audio listeners, um, all the shelving in my closet just like, came off the wall because some moron idiot who built my house, yes, probably the same guy who made all my doorknobs different. If you remember that episode where I ranted about how all of the doorknobs in my house are different and I don't know why and I can't even, so the same numbskull who's like, let's make every doorknob different, decided to screw in all of the shelving in my closet into the drywall and not the studs. Ha! Like what, dude? What are you doing? Like you build houses and then you just like, you stop there. You're like, that's fine. What else is going to collapse in my house? Like straight up. Actually, I had a dream last night that my house was like, like caving in on itself. Like it's serious. Okay. So anyway, I was sitting on the couch and, um, just, I hear the most, like, I'm just watching TV, right? I'm watching, I'm watching the Lacey Peterson documentary because I believe I was like 14, 15, 16 or something like when it happened. And, uh, I was on all that at the time and I was just like, so wrapped up doing like kids stuff that like, I didn't, I didn't really know the story, the whole like Lacey Peterson story. I didn't know what happened. I don't know. So like we see the documentary on Netflix and I'm like, I want to watch that. Cause I recognize the whole, I recognize that name. And Sean's like, Oh, do you, do you know what happened? I'm like, no. And he's like, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> I feel like Sean is doing less of watching the documentary of, and more of watching my face as I'm like, oh, I think he did it. And he's like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> so we're, um, we're on episode three. We're about to start episode three, right? Where everything's going to be revealed. Don't tell me, no spoilers, <laughs> but I'm going to find out. Um, they just um, dragged a body out of the the water and I'm, I'm thinking oh my god is that her anyway so I'm sitting there I'm watching I'm watching Lacey Peterson documentary I'm like dude this guy did it and Sean's like yeah no shit, he did it and then all of a sudden upstairs the most unnerving sound boom 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 I freak out right I like run I run upstairs as fast as I can because there's no screaming that followed the dun dun dun. There's no screaming. So I'm like, okay, well, either the kids are fine or they died instantly. <laughs> like whatever happened upstairs, like it's one of those, right? So I like open both their doors. And I'm like, are you okay? And they're just, they're like, they're so asleep. Like they, this did not affect them at all. So it's not their room. So I'm like, oh God, I immediately know what it is. I go and I open my closet door and just everything I own is just on the <laughs> It's just on the ground, dude. It's just like, look at this picture. If you're an audio listener, just go to the YouTube video or watch the Spotify video just for this part so you can see the picture of my closet. That's all my stuff, dude. That's all my stuff. It collapsed in on itself like a dying star like the 2008 stock market. And so right now we're like, well, 
okay, step one is to just get all this crap out of the closet. So we borrowed some folding tables and we set them up in our room. So now it's me taking my clothes one by one and folding them and putting them on this folding table like I work at Abercrombie. Dude, I'm folding clothes like I'm in retail. <laughs> I look at all my clothes. This is all my clothes just folded up on this table. It's like I have my own sample sale. It's like my sample sale of my own stuff. <laughs> and you realize real quickly when you lay out all the stuff, all your clothes that you own, that you're like, I have bad taste in fashion. <laughs> I'm seriously up there. I, I've never worked retail in my life, but seriously, just like folding every shirt and like trying to, <laughs> trying to make it nice on the table. I'm like, I work at Abercrombie. I should be standing by the front door being like, hi. Are you rich, skinny, and hot? Then come shop at Abercrombie. <laughs> Buy a tube job. God, I hate Abercrombie. It'd be funny to, um, I'm so glad they got taken down for all their discrimination stuff. I ranted about this before, but like, <laughs> I wonder how many of our self-esteem issues came from Abercrombie. <laughs> or like, if you weren't a, a young, skinny, rich, white kid, <laughs> like you were shunned out of the store like you couldn't even look their direction they're like don't even look at us don't even look the hot kids out front with their little like spritz of cologne they're like don't even look at us oh you have braces don't even look at us yeah go to claire's go to claire's and buy some butterfly clips you ugly mother go to claire's don't even don't even look at us <laughs> Uh, and then you like go to American Eagle and they're like, um, sh fine, <laughs> fine. You can come in freaking Abercrombie reject. Anyway, so all my stuff is on a table. Like I work in retail and all my stuff is terrible and I'm going to throw away half of it. But, um, speaking of fashion, that's not awful. Check out my shirt. Y'all check out my tank top guys. Temperamental merch is forthcoming. I get my poor audio listeners guys. Just, uh, just be a video watcher for this one episode, okay? I know I say that every time. But look at, so I got a turquoise uh, temperamental podcast tank top. It's got Kevin's face on it, which I drew. That's why I don't have to worry about like copyright stuff because I literally drew this with a Sharpie and I usually can't draw, but this one came out super cool. Like the second I drew it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can draw. And then I tried to recreate it. Um, and I couldn't ever, like this is the only good thing I've ever drawn in my life. So I scanned it and I made it digital and now it's on a shirt and now you can soon get it. Um, and actually at the end of this episode, I'm gonna unbox the other two. So I got the tank top for me and then I got two men's shirts that I'm gonna um, look at for the first time on this podcast. Ah, I'm so excited, you guys. Um, but yeah, my closet, my closet collapsed. My closet collapsed like a dying star and all my stuff sucks. Anyway, uh, welcome to episode 51. We're doing it, and uh, I wanna thank my subscribers on Instagram, because you guys have been kind of, um, <laughs> like I, kind of, I don't know why, I kind of knew this was gonna happen, right? Like the subscribers get two things. They get sexy photos that I have not posted for the rest of the world, and they are my therapist. Those are the two things that you can have as a subscriber. You're gonna hear me vent about stuff and whine and cry, and then you're gonna get boobs that the rest of the internet has not seen. Not like full boobs, like, you know, sexy photo shoot pictures that I haven't posted elsewhere, but it's not like OnlyFans. I'm not doing OnlyFans. Not that I have anything against OnlyFans. I'm just saying it's not that. I'm just saying if you want to hang out with me in my subscriber section, it's awesome. But um, I'm going to, I want to talk about something. I kind of, so I kind of ran this by my subscribers and I'm going to run it by all of you guys. So I was recently informed that um, I'm not, marketable <laughs> basically <laughs> like I'm not marketable and that my in so many words my entire social media presence is a failure that's basically that's basically what I was told <laughs> and um here's here's why um I think I was I've been totally screwed up um f from childhood because I've been trained to think one thing and the world has changed and now everything's different and now I'm supposed to do the other thing. Let me explain. So I've been in entertainment as an actor, a dancer, a singer. So all these things, I've been doing it since I was three years old. Like I was basically born on the stage. And growing up, I really idolized people like Gene Kelly 
and you know ethel merman and like sorry i have this itch on my nose i swear i'm not picking my nose i just have this like itch on my nose play the lunchbox play the clip of me hitting brendan with the lunchbox while i itch my nose i'll do it what come here oh. Oh. <laughs> So growing up on stage, um, I really idolized these old Hollywood stars who could kind of do it all, right? They could do comedy movies, they could do musicals, they could tap dance, they could do ballet, they could do jazz, they could sing, they could do a dramatic movie, comedy, like anything. They were eloquent, eloquent on the microphone, um, you know, they were, they were poised, they had beautiful fashion, they could just do it all. And I grew up at a young age really idolizing these people. And so I worked very, very hard, almost seven days a week, definitely five days a week, honing all of my talents. I would go to singing lessons. I would go to piano lessons. I would, uh, I had so many dance classes, tap dance, which I really excelled in jazz ballet. And then I was also doing theater. So, and then I was also taking acting lessons. So I was really doing it all. And I was, I was putting my all into every single one of these endeavors, right? I wanted to be the best at all of them. And I, and I accomplished it at the time. Like I was winning first place trophies left and right. I mean, like my, I joked last week, I think my mom still has like an entire warehouse full of first place trophies. And I'm like, you should donate those. We don't, you don't need them. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then even when I was signed at a young age to agencies and managers, you know, acting agents, they were like, yeah, you got to be a jack of all trades. You got to be able to do it all. Like if casting is asking for a goth girl, you got to become a goth girl. If casting is act asking for a Broadway superstar, you got to be that. Can you sing? Can you ride a horse? Can you juggle? Do it all. And so I really spent a huge portion of my life trying to be good at everything. And I was always really proud of myself for that. I mean, I, I think it's like taking full advantage of life when you're, tr when you're experiencing, you know, different hobbies and, and working hard at different things and having different goals and just seeing what your body is capable of, what your body and brain are capable of. And uh, I remember even after I was on all that, where probably <laughs> more than any other kids show, they needed me to be a jack of all trades. I needed to be all these different characters. I needed to be able to sing and dance and be a goth girl and be the girl, the hyper girl in Sugar and Coffee, you know, and be the cheerleader in, in Together Forever. Like I, it really stretched me even further. That's why that show was so perfect for me. That sketch comedy was so perfect for me. Um, and then I remember even after I was on that show, I was kind of struggling to book book jobs because my uh, my agent was like, well, you've kind of been typecast, right? So everybody in this industry now thinks that you only do comedy, so they don't want to cast you for other things because that's that's what you're famous for right now. And I'm like, well, I don't want to be Screech, right? Like, I mean, like obviously Screech is amazing, but like <laughs> like typecast is a real thing. And I was basically made to believe that that was a bad thing. Like, you don't want to be typecast. I remember, you know, my publicist and my agent, my manager, they were all just like, we got to make sure you're not typecast. Like, we got to show all these casting directors that you can do dramatic acting, that you can do all these other things. And you can, you can be a host. You can be an MC on stage. You can do all these things. So I worked even harder to break out of that mold because even though I loved comedy, didn't want to be typecast. Um, so that's, that's been like my whole, that was my whole childhood, like growing up. Um, and then yesterday I, I had this meeting and I was, I was kind of shocked to learn that I'm too all over the place. <laughs> like now it's the complete opposite because I'm not niche. People don't know what to do with me. Like brands don't know if they want to partner with me because I'm too all over the place. I'm not pigeonholed into one thing. People don't look at me and they instantly say, oh, she's this. Oh, she's a makeup influencer. Oh, she's a fitness influencer. Oh, she's a goth chick. Oh, she does. Like, because I haven't picked one, now I'm like screwed. <laughs> Isn't that insane? So brands don't want to do deals with me because they'll look at my Instagram and be like, oh, so she hosts a comedy podcast that's family friendly, even though I kind of already cussed a couple times. Yeah, I believe it. You know, so she hosts a family friendly podcast with her cat, but then also she, 
you know, puts on black Viking makeup and sings in a metal band and like loves Halloween and dark stuff. But then also she's a former child star from Nickelodeon. So she's got nostalgic stuff. And also she does, you know, sexy photo shoots because she's a model. So in my mind, I'm like, hell yeah, I can do all these things. Look how malleable I am. Look at how you can mold me and sculpt me. Look at that. Look at that. Dude, I'm a chameleon. I'm a chameleon. I can do anything. And brands are like, um, we don't like that. We don't like that. We want you to be one thing. Um, so now I'm very limited on, I mean, I, again, this is not like a total fact, but like it, it feels like that's what I've, you know, been told is that now I'm very, I'm extremely limited because I haven't picked one thing because think about the creators and people you follow on the internet. Usually you can sum them up in like, you know, in one word or one phrase, like, Oh, a video game streamer or a makeup influencer, you know, fashion influencer. Like that's, that's what people do. They build their entire Instagram accounts based on like one thing. And then brands see that and they're like, Oh yeah, perfect. She's a makeup influencer. We sell lipstick. So let's give her some lipstick and she'll influence people to wear this lipstick. Influence people. Just, we just want you to influence people. <laughs> um, so, I, but I'm not that like I, I challenge each of you to leave me a comment, um, on this video, summing up how you would describe me. I'm very curious because I know I have fans from my video game days who would, I used to be described as a gamer girl. I'm not really that anymore. I do comedy podcasts, I do Nickelodeon, I do metal band, I do singing. Like I challenge each of you to leave a comment on this video with a very short one to two to three word summary of how you would describe Lisa Foyles. Oh, this is going to be hilarious. <laughs> this is going to prove the point that I'm all over the place. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. They don't want me to be a chameleon. They don't want me to be a chameleon. A chameleon can do too many things. They want me, they want me to do one thing. They want me to be a woodpecker. Dude, woodpeckers got it dialed in. They peck wood. That's what they do. They've picked one thing and they're all in on it. They're committed to pecking wood. Woodpeckers are like, this is what we do. If you sell wood in any capacity, you, I'm your influencer. <laughs> Come to me. I help you with the wood related issues because I'm a woodpecker and I peck wood. But see, they're like, hey, Lisa, don't be a chameleon. Be a woodpecker. Be a poison dart frog. Dude, <laughs> poison dart frogs are all in on poisoning people with darts. That's their, one, that's their thing. They're like, this is what we do. We're a poison dart frog and we're going to hit you in the neck with a dart and you're going to get poisoned. You're going to die. And that's our thing. That's like kind of our thing. We're poison dart frogs. It's in the name. <laughs> it's what, it's very obvious. That would be, you know, a social media brand manager would go to woodpeckers and poison dart frogs and they'd be like, you're doing excellent. People immediately know what you're all about as soon as you tell them your name. <laughs> and then they'll, they'll get to the chameleon and they're like, so what, um, chameleon, what does that word even mean? And what do you, so what do you do? And then, um, me as the chameleon, my eyes are like going all different directions and I'm just like strobing colors. Like my body just like strobing colors in my eyes. Like I can't, I'm like trying to look at the manager with like one eye, but my other eyes like over here and I'm like, I can, it means I can do anything. It means I can do anything. And they're like, um, you can't even look at me with both eyes. And I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying. I got the, I got the one, I got the one eye looking at, looking at you. Anyway, you want me to be green or red or rainbow or polka dots? What do you want me, what do you want me to do? And then, um, the meeting ended like an hour ago and I'm still just like, where are you? <laughs> I can't, I can't see you. Are you still here? Are you still here? Look at me. I'm rainbow now. Is that good? Is that good? And they've been gone already getting brand deals for the woodpeckers and the poison dart frogs. And then me as the chameleon is like, <laughs> changing colors. Now I'm gray, now I'm turquoise, and now one eye is looking up and one eye is looking down. Oh, so they're trying to clone woolly mammoths. Why don't you clone woolly mammoths about it? How about that? We kind of see that's another good one. Woolly mammoth. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm a brand manager. What's your name again? 
Wooly mammoth. Perfect. Oh my gosh. People know you're wooly. That's a fun word. It's whimsical and <laughs> cute and adorable. Wooly. Wooly mammoth. Mammoth means you're big and usually big things aren't cute and wooly. So you're a wooly mammoth. This is perfect. Here's $20,000 a month in brand deals. <sighs> Dude, Wooly Mammoth's got it dialed in more than me. Wooly Mammoths are doing better than me. They're trying to get more of them. <laughs> I'm dying more every day, every second of the day. I'm dying a little bit more. I mean, we all are, but they're making more Wooly Mammoths. Okay, hold on. We got I want to learn. What are we doing? Where are we on time? Uh, okay, we're good. Okay, I actually don't. I don't really know what's going on with the Wooly Mammoths. But let's, learn, let's learn together. Okay. At Colossal Biosciences in Dallas, the mission is clear. Pair cutting-edge science with high-tech tools to reach a goal. To reach a goal. Prehistoric proportions. Prehistoric proportions. Less than five years away from seeing mammoths back on the planet. Not five in- years? It's simply a function of time. So two really interesting Which is why One, co-founder and CEO uh, Ben Lamb says, now's the time to embrace the term de-extinction. The process of creating an extinct species, or at least an animal, no. that resembles one. In Colossal's case, the woolly mammoth. No. Which do- no. Guys, we have a series of movies about this very thing and why we shouldn't do it. So preoccupied with, with, with if they could, they didn't bother to uh, wonder if they should. What's the quote? So worried about if they could, they don't want to think about how they were too they were too busy of wondering if they could. They didn't stop and ponder and think and wonder if they should. That's probably the quote verbatim. Um, anyway, this is a terrible idea, but good for the woolly mammoths. They're gonna have a great social presence, and um, and I love that. I love that for them. Um, dude, I'm shaking so. <laughs> what happens and I'm mostly made of energy drink at this point <laughs> I used to drink so much water and then I discovered Celsius and now I drink so much Celsius it's so unhealthy dude so this is a problem in the summer in Vegas I can't run and exercise outside like I like to so I just um um I spiral I spiral out of control in an unhealthy in an unhealthy uh regimen just daily just I'm mostly mostly made of Celsius and tears <laughs> And that's because I'm a chameleon and not a poison dart frog. Dude, poison dart frogs have it so good. Anyway, um, so I'm going to open up the shirts in just a second. I didn't forget. Don't worry. I uh, have super exciting news. My band, Von Bolt, Von Bolt and the Adversaries, has a residency at the famous punk rock museum here in Las Vegas every Tuesday. From like seven to 10, like we're playing like for so many hours. We, we might even start earlier at like six. Uh, but this is a really big deal, guys. A residency, a local residency is kind of the dream because it's really hard to go on tour with a band like around the country when your band is made of adults with families and people who love them and children <laughs> um, and closets that collapse in on themselves like a dying star. Um, it's, it's hard to like travel the country touring. So, uh, you know, finding places to play as a band locally, you know, you get to the point where you've played everywhere, all the venues and you're like, okay, well what next? So to be offered a residency at one location that happens to be like the coolest location in all of Las Vegas, guys, this is like the dream. I'm already a massive fan. Come up here. Kevin, 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 Kevin. I'm already a massive fan of the museum. Um, started by fat Mike from NoFX, and everybody who works there is just so genuine and sweet and smart and super funny. And they're all just like the best people. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys know our band is Von Bolt, but this act and this show is called Von Bolt and the adversaries. And that means that anybody who wants to jump up with our band, with our band and play a song with us, they are now an honorary adversary. You know, it's like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, right? It's like, uh, you know, Eddie and the Cruisers. Like, we're, we're the and the, because now anybody who wants to join, like, say, you know, Fat Mike shows up and we're like, yo, jump up, let's sing Linoleum. Now he's an adversary. And we'll get to uh, have lots of fun special guests. I really want to get Fred Armisen to jump up with us because he does tours at the museum every once in a while. And then he can be an adversary. But um, usually when you get a residency in Las Vegas, you're playing at a casino 
you know, a restaurant or something like that. And, and you're kind of required to play certain songs. They're like, you better play. Don't stop believing once every 45 minutes or you're fired. <laughs> Give the people. Can you not move my microphone away from my face, please? Um, Give the people Sweet Home Alabama or you're out. Um, so thankfully, we don't have to play either of those songs. We can play anything we want. We can play anything from punk rock to the misfits to sea shanties and Irish songs. And, you know, we, we finished the night with the full metal Von Bolt set where I'm headbanging and we're, we have electric instruments. Like, it's just, it's such a perfect gig. And I really hope that you guys can plan a trip to Vegas to come see me perform at the museum. This is the first time ever where now uh, I'm somewhere regularly and my fans can like plan to come see me because I don't really do cons anymore. So it's hard to, I'm like Waldo, right? Like, where is she? <laughs> well, now you know. Now you can plan a trip to Vegas. You can come to the Punk Rock Museum on Tuesday nights and you can watch the chaos unfold. Uh, here's a funny clip from Monday's show where in the middle of the song, my band did this to me. So there you go. Dude, how annoying, how annoying did I sound when I'm like, why would you do that to me? <laughs> why would you do that to me? Gosh, I'm so annoying. Um, all right, let's get to the t-shirts. So sorry, audio listeners. Here we go. That's a drum roll. <laughs> Drum roll. Here we go. <laughs> Worst drum roll ever. Um, okay, here we go. As you can see, I'm wearing the turquoise ladies tank top uh, with the temperamental cat logo on the chest. It doesn't have any words. I really like the cat logo. Like I want to put this cat on everything. <laughs> I want stickers. I want everything. So um, I tried to keep it simple with the tank top. And I ordered two shirts here. Okay, let's undo this one. All right, so this is a gray men's shirt. Uh, it's the Gildan 5000. Oh, is that a Gildan 5000? It sure is. <laughs> it's like the most um, common used t-shirt for people who print merch is like the Gildan. Because it's like, it's it's like soft. It's like comfy. It's a good size for a large. So it's a like kind of a dark gray with the black cat logo on it, which I really like. I like this a lot. It's like super simple. Again, you know, you don't want to get too complex. All right. Last shirt. I'll have more colors and styles available on the shop, but I only just ordered these for samples just to see ah, how they turned out. Um, oh, I like this one. All right. So we got a black a black Gildan 5000 t-shirt. The Gildan 5000. <laughs> Don't call a t-shirt that. <laughs> Just call it cotton tea number five. Don't be like, that's the Gildan 5000. Shut up. <laughs> anyway, here's the Gildan 5000 t-shirt. It's black. It's got um, the orange cat logo on it. It's got the white temperamental letters. And I enjoy the black and the orange and the white because it looks very Halloween to me. And you know, you girl spooky like that. Although you wouldn't know it because not my entire Instagram isn't dedicated to me being spooky. So um, how would you ever know that she's spooky? Uh, these are great. I like the quality. I like the material. I like the printing. Um, I think these are perfect. And I'm so excited to finally sell merch. So I got to get that Shopify shop up and running. I also got prints. I'm going to sell signed prints. It's all coming together, guys. Like literally in days, this stuff's going to be available. Um, and uh, dude, support the show. Get a t-shirt. If you're coming to SplatCon in October, you got to wear that t-shirt. I want you to show up at the con with that cat on your chest, unless you're going to wear like a costume, which is like cool. Like, unless you're going to like cosplay. <laughs> That's fine. But you come in the t-shirt. 
You make me so happy. I'm gonna cry tears of joy. Anyway, um, love you guys. That's all I got to say. Uh, check out Fumble on Spotify. We got a new song, Strangers in the Night. Um, as Frank Sinatra cover, come see us at the Punk Rock Museum every Tuesday. And, uh, oh, also, I think the punk, the punk Rock Museum streams it live. They were streaming it this last Tuesday. So if you can't be here in person, follow Punk Rock Museum on Instagram. They'll live stream our show, probably, hopefully. We'll see. Um, but uh, you guys are so great. And thank you for supporting me. And remember to leave that comment about how you would describe me. I'm like, really, I'm really interested to see because I don't really feel like I have plans to pigeonhole myself anytime soon um I kind of like being a chameleon and not a poison dart frog although that's sounds pretty metal maybe one of the most metal animals the poison dart frog anyway love you guys bye drum section. Good, 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 good. Idiot.